it's really hard not to shake that sense of panic. Uh, looking at Manchester United's transfer window so far, what's to come? 20 days. Who are we signing? Where are we signing players? When are they coming in? There's so many questions to ask. And one question this summer has always been about signing a new attacker, regardless of what's going on with the Cristiano Ronaldo situation. Now, lots of us thought that, that might be Anthony until we found out the price tag was 80 million euros and we got priced out of a move for him. Now, somebody who I've mentioned as an alternative a few weeks ago was Cody Gakpo. And now the Gakpo to Manchester United stories have really started to accelerate. What I want to do in this video is run through the full story of Gakpo to Manchester United. When the reports began, how they've gathered in strength, who's saying what, is there any reliability behind them? I'll run through all of that in this video. And I'll also describe and explain why, despite what's going on, you shouldn't be looking at Gakpo as a bad panic signing. I genuinely think if we can get this done, it will be a very good signing. So make sure, if you do enjoy the video by the end of it, ladies and gents, make sure you go down there, hit the like button, subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. Uh, the community continues to grow and, grow, and I really, really do love what's going on. But let's run through this full Gakpo to Manchester United story, right? Because it's been around for a while. That's the first thing I would say. We rewind to February here, back when, of course, Ralph Rannick was in the club. And Tom Hawkinson from the Mirror was linking him to us. Rannick has instructed the club's recruitment team to check up on Gakpo. And he was watched most recently in their 1-0 win over Maccabi Tel Aviv. Almost like Ralph Rannick did know a thing or two about that. Uh, let's not get into a Rannick conversation. But it's, the, the Gakpo stories have really accelerated this week. But they, the first time that name was mentioned was back in February. But of course, with Eric Ten Hag in charge, it gives a little bit more credence to the energy behind it. Because as we know, we don't have a recruitment department this summer that Eric can lean on. So what's he doing? He's leaning on what he's seen with his own eyes. And that's where the Gakpo story really starts to accelerate. Uh, Simon Monarch from the Mirror here on the 6th of August saying that Ajax demanding 80 million for Anthony has prompted Ten Hag to shift his attention to Cody Gakpo. Now remember, they demanded 80 million for Anthony in June. Again, something that I can't help but shift, and I agree with you all here. This is a conversation, Cody Gakpo, we should have and could have been having six weeks ago. Easily. He's always been available for around about the same price. We've always been outpriced for Anthony. The one now. And that's where I think you get that sense of panic. Like we're reacting rather than being proactive, which is the biggest criticism I've got. Maybe not the biggest, but one of the biggest criticisms I've got of our club in the transfer market. Fast forward to the 9th of August, and it's Rob Dawson from ESPN who sort of took those reports a little bit further, saying Manchester United have registered their interest in signing Cody Gakpo. Followed up by Charlotte Dunker from The Times. She's saying United are looking to sign another forward before the window closes. And one of a number of players United are looking at is PSV's Cody Gakpo. Then Jason Burt waited in. Same day. 9th of August is really when it sort of went, well, accelerated quite a bit. A couple of days ago. Hmm, lo and behold, just after we lost to Brighton. Again, it's hard not to sense this, that feeling of panic, isn't it? And he's saying that Cody Gakpo is now looking like a viable signing for Manchester United. Uh, and we fast forward, well, this, this is something else that Jason Bird actually said. He said, PSV are unlikely to listen to offers for Gakpo until they know whether they will make it through the Champions League qualifiers to reach the group stage, which is definitely an issue in this whole Gakpo situation because they play Rangers in a two-leg qualifier. The second leg doesn't finish until the 24th of August. If we do go for Gakpo, it's unlikely that he joins before then. But we're going to have to deal without having that new signing for the first three games, maybe four games of the Premier League season. And again, a big reason why United fans are, are, are fair enough to be frustrated about this thing that continues to go on with our transfers just being later and later and later. Sky waiting in the same thing, saying Manchester United are preparing a move for Cody Gakpo. And this is what Fabrizio said on the situation. Let me bring this up here. He said Gakpo is attracted to the Premier League and has the same agency as Eric Ten Hag, which I didn't actually realise. Maybe that helps United in this situation. Ten Hag knows him and has been an admirer of him for a long, long time. Of course he has. I think we knew that last season, of course. Cody Gakpo's PSV beat them in the Dutch Cup final in the last season that stopped Ten Hag from getting the, the double. And it's been PSV who have been going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ajax for the years where Ten Hag has been in charge. 
And Marcel van der Kram from The Telegraph has said this. He goes, he is the kind of player that Ten Hag likes. Arsenal made a bit a couple of weeks ago. Five Premier League clubs are interested, but if the choice is there, you go to Manchester United. And that's really where the story has developed from. As I say, from back in February, if we go back, uh, if we go back here, as I said, I think it was Tom Hopkins from the Mirror, Tom Hopkinson from the Mirror, to this point here where you've got Marcel van der Kran saying, look, if he's going to leave anywhere, he'd like to join Manchester United. And in my opinion, I think the idea of signing Cody Gakpo isn't one that I think United fans should be looking to in the same sort of way fans looked at on Arn Al Altovic. And we were correct to do that as fans, and that's now stopped. Good. Club was an idiot for getting that far down the line, but at least it's stopped now. Now, Rabio, I think there's a fair reason to be frustrated, and I've voiced my grievances with that. But Cody Gakpo is not somebody I would voice those frustrations with. He's somebody who was named the Eredivisie Dutch Player of the Year by Voitbol Internationale. And he was named PSV's Player of the Year. And he is somebody really genuinely who I would be excited about signing. Because, uh, look, if you take one look at his stats, he, we all, well, maybe you don't actually. Like 20, the 23-year-old is a left winger. Out, he's not an out-and-out -out left winger. He can play across those positions. But look at the numbers here across his career. He's made 143 appearances on the left wing compared to only 20 on the right and 18 as a centre forward. But he is somebody who matches quite a few things. He's somebody who's really naturally capable of playing with his back to goal. Somebody who definitely likes cutting inside from the left and somebody who really has a goal threat. He scored, how many of his goals did he score last year? I pulled this number up here. He missed the first 12 games of the season and in 27 appearances overall, 12 goals and 13 assists. Good numbers. Very, very good numbers. And of course, everyone here is going to immediately go, ah, oh, Sam, but he's from the Dutch League. We've not had a good success rate from the Dutch League. Players from the Dutch League have sometimes... I don't like, and I keep saying it, it's like, I don't care what league they come from. And I'll be honest, Malasia, really good start. Ericsson, really good start. Martinez, I have every confidence in him. And I thought he had a, a decent enough game against... Um, Brighton, but it was just such a slow pace that well, it was painful. It really was painful. I trust Ten Hag in, in, the, in, the, in the signings that he is identifying. And if he's happy to bring him in, then I would be delighted to bring him in. I'm going to do a separate video on a scouting report of, Kak, of Gakpo, really looking into the fundamentals behind his game. But he's somebody who absolutely plays on the left-hand side. And I tell you what, I've got his picture on the wall there, just by a lo lovely coincidence. But Rude, do us a favour. Rude, of course, is the new PSV manager this season. Maybe the fans of PSV wouldn't be particularly happy at, at, at PSV setting what, probably their best player to a club managed by Eric Ten Hag, given the rivalry. But Rude, man, do us a favour, please. We need some sort of favours this summer. But Gary Gapo, for me, I would be genuinely excited about the signing of him. I've, I wish that we could have been having this conversation six, seven weeks ago and, and it was already over the line because as soon as we heard that Anthony was going to cost 80 million, that was an immediate situation where you move on. And I've spoken about this in detail this summer. We haven't moved on from Frankie de Jong because there really is no alternative to Frankie de Jong. Not for Eric Ten Hag and not for his system. We are making system signings, not just players who tick certain boxes. They've got to tick his boxes for his system. Whereas Anthony, I understood the desires to go after him, but bringing in Gakpo, like, the first things first, Gakpo's going to play on the left, ahead of Rashford, rather than on the right. Sancho will stay out on the right-hand side. So in that sense, yes, it's a bit of a, a, dive, a, bit of a different type of signing to Anthony, but it's bringing in a really top-level physical winger that would add something into our team. As I say, the ability to play with his back to goal, hold that ball up maybe, to wait for an overlap and bring something in. That, that, we don't have that at the moment. Not with Sancho, not with Rashford. Nobody can really do that inside our team. I'm really happy these rumours are here. I'm frustrated that we weren't this far down the line uh, a good few weeks ago when we should have been. But it seems like Manchester United really are going after Cody Gakpo. As I say, if we rewind here to the 9th of August, you've got Jason Burt from The Telegraph. You've got Sky 
Who else have you got saying it? You've got Rob Dawson, you've got Charlotte Dunker. Lots and lots of journalists are saying this. So what do you think about the Gakpo rumours? Do you think it's another panic type signing? Do you think it'll be a good... I personally think it'll be a good signing rather than somebody who's panicking. But you can let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll continue to cover it as and when there's more updates on it. But what do you think about Gakpo? Make sure you subscribe and make sure you let me know in the comments.